Hello, this is Brett from Survival Comms, and today we are using our Signalink interface with our Microbit X radio to make PSK31 contacts. The most efficient way to make contacts with a low power HF radio, such as the Microbit X, is going to be either through CW or through the use of a digital mode. Now, to use the Signalink with the Microbit X, we're going to have to build ourselves a little interface cable, and that's what we're going to do today. If you like running the digital modes, you probably have one of these, a Signalink USB or another interface. Uh, I happen to like the Signalink USB. These are a, a really good product. We're going to configure this for the Microbit X. Uh, currently, I have this thing configured for my uh, ICOM IC756 Pro 3. And what I'm going to do is, is show you how you would go and convert this and the way it's pinned out to operate for the Microbit X. Building your own interface cable is a piece of cake. You're going to need a Cat5 jumper, a couple of plugs here. Uh, one stereo and one mono, or both stereo will work just fine. Take your signal link and pull the four Allen screws out of the front of it, and then you can withdraw the board from the housing. Set that aside. What we're interested in is this jumper configuration right here. And when you get one of these, you, you end up having to pin this out for your particular radio. And all you're doing is, is you're taking the RJ45 plug here and you are taking these particular pins and indexing them for the device itself on this side. So this tells us which pins are going to be active because I don't want to change the setting in this device. I want to be able to use this device with my 756 Pro 3 and also use it with the Micro Bit X. So this is where we're going to wire it. By our jumper configuration, we see that pin 2 is ground, pin 3 is push to talk, pin 4 is our microphone connection, and pin 5 is our speaker. Now, in typical CAT5 cable, the color of the conductors is orange is going to be ground, green trace is going to be push to talk, blue is going to be your microphone, and blue trace is going to be your speaker connection. Here's another way of showing how that cable is constructed. You can look here, hook down on the RJ45, pin 1 on the left, pin 8 on the right. This right here is your speaker connector, this right here is the microphone connector. The length of our cable only needs to be enough to get to the speaker connector at the rear of the radio and the microphone connector in the front, and then enough to reach the device itself. We're going to want to have enough of this outer insulation removed to reach from the microphone port in the front to the speaker in the back, and then we can put the signal link on top. Now that we have our pairs exposed, we know that we're going to need the solid orange, the green trace, and the blue and blue trace. So we can take our brown and remove our brown and take it totally out of the picture. And then we can start to break down our twists Take your solid green and your orange trace and cut those off because you won't be needing those. And then you can cut your solid orange and blue trace short. Those are going to be your speaker. Just like that. And then this right here is going to be for your microphone circuit. Construction details. I've slid back the cover for this three and a half millimeter connector and this is going to be our speaker connector which goes into the rear of the radio and you can see how I've shorted up with heat shrink when I've made my crimp around here to retain the retain the cable to add strength to this connection here this is the microphone lead the microphone lead is cut longer to reach the front of the radio I've just made a turn around the speaker wires and then I've run it down and out the bottom of this connector cover and that way when it's all closed up you can see how the speaker lead exits the connection and this is the microphone end and as you see I've shorted it up with heat shrink tubing here and that gives a nice positive bite with the crimp here for the three and a half millimeter audio connector to make our cable as strong as we can make it and plug in our speaker microphone front and plug in our signal link and there you have it congratulations you just saved yourself about 30 bucks 
Okay, we got ourselves set up on Whisper here. We've got our Sega Link plugged in. We're monitoring through our speaker. Currently, I've got my service monitor. I'm not seeing a signal to it. And we're just going to test the transmit side of it. Toggles in the transmit. 6.3 watts. And our interface is receiving now. So what we need to do is, is put it on the air. And the cable seems to work pretty good with the signal link. You can see here all the stations in about 15 minutes of operation that are either hearing me or I'm hearing them. Running the digital modes on HF is fun. It's even more fun when you do it with stuff you made yourself. I hope this helps. This is Brett from Survival Comms. Till next time.